Hello indie game fans, the beat'em up is a classic genre that goes back to the quarter devouring arcade machines with it having a little bit of a modern renaissance due to games like Streets of Rage 4, so see what's coming up soon beginning with Ronin's Run, a game that is set in feudal Japan in which our hero has to avenge the death of his master. It looks pretty sleek although enemies seem to have a tendency of standing around and waiting but perhaps it's early gameplay footage so I'll be keeping an eye on this. This next title has been in development for a little while, but the developer is still working on it since they are posting on Twitter with the latest release window being Q3 2024 in which Streets of Chaos is a pretty blatant tribute to Streets of Rage, even having music in this trailer sounding similar to Streets of Rage 2. There's also inspiration from other classics like Double Dragon and looks to be a pretty faithful tribute so I do wonder what new ideas they will bring to the table. This video is brought to you by Ra Ra Boom, a 4 player side scrolling beat em up title that looks fantastic. If you couldn't already tell from the title, the game follows a cheer squad supergroup from space as they battle AI robots which have gone rogue. From the construction of the trailer, the pacing, visuals, animations, and gameplay, there definitely seems to be a level of quality to this game and interestingly, the developers do talk specifically about incorporating ranged weapons into beat-em-up combat. It's not very beaty in the beat-em-up parts of the genre to have guns, so they must be able to balance this aspect along with there being a tech tree upgrade system to increase the potency of your character's attacks. The characters do fit certain archetypes such as the tank character which holds a shield as well as a katana building star throwing ninja but my favourite has to be the rocket launcher building character named Saida. The game also features hand-drawn art and a killer soundtrack so if you love beat'em ups be sure to wishlist the game now on Steam. Beat'em ups really can take all sorts of shapes and have flexibility across different themes in which House of Pain obviously has horror influence. For some reason, our protagonist wears a hockey mask like Jason and wields a machete and shotgun who breaks out of prison to save his family from a mad doctor and his mutant creations and looks alright. I initially had G.I. Joe Wrath of Cobra higher up on the list, but upon closer inspection, let's just say I don't think this will be as good as TMNT Shredder's Revenge, but hey, I'll be happy to be proven wrong by the developer. It's another licensed product which have vastly increased in quality as compared to the past, with the pixel art look here being good and the gimmick being the different G.I. Joe heroes all looking and playing very differently. Here's a throwback beat'em up title that is akin to the old arcade titles in Buccaneer's Ship Shape, one that looks the part due to the pixel art, UI, and even has the ability to switch to classic mode being pirate themed and thus have 4 unique playable characters and up to 4 player co-op, in which your crew is fighting their way through the Caribbean in search of treasure. The presence of classic mode might have tipped you off since this is a remake of the Buccaneer's arcade game from 1989 in which the team has received the blessings from the original developer and while I don't have any nostalgia for this particular game, I'm interested to see how it's presented in the modern day. Oh, and as a side note, I have covered a similar looking title named Abathor in my list covering action platformers which might be of interest as well. Since we last took a look at Maiden Cops, the key art and trailer has been updated so progress is being made along with a release window of Q2 2024 so we should see the release soon. This is a beat'em up title in which monster girl policewomen fight crime in Maiden City battling a mysterious criminal organisation named the Liberators who seek to control the city through violence, fear and chaos. It has 3 playable characters but only 2 player co-op support but looks to have fun combat and humorous writing. For lack of a better place to put these, I've included some games which might be considered to the brawlers instead of beat em ups such as Spark Hunt, a 2.5D title with different playable characters and what appears to be a focus on combos and getting that counter up as high as possible. 
there is environmental interactions such as throwing enemies out of windows to instantly kill them or to smash an enemy's head against a background object along with the usual special abilities and great looking action. Another long in development title is Fallen City Brawl, a game with a grimy pixel art style that is not the most crisp looking, but I have to assume that it's intentional and is in line with the setting that they want to create. It's another throwback to the games from the 80s and 90s and has that final fight feel to the game, but in which the characters take up a lot more space on screen as compared to other games. This has had quite the development history, first going to Kickstarter which was unsuccessful, but they managed to find a publisher and according to them, it's an early 2024 release, so stay tuned to the channel and I'll let you know when there is a date. Another entry in the 2D brawler space is Quit Today, which comes to us from a Taiwanese developer being a self-described epic resonation adventure in which you go into office to kick the asses of your colleagues since they assume that you want to resign and start attacking you first. Now I'm not advocating for workplace violence, so there's of course nuance to this, probably to do with workplace toxicity and so on, in which the art and animations here are pretty impressive and look fun. This has been in development for quite a while as well, and the developer is still working on it, where my guess is that 2024 looks likely for release. I'm a little bit confused as to what kind of game this is, since, and I'm reading word for word from the Steam page, Final Night is an auto battler game styled after classic TRPGs where you create and directly control a party of 4 adventurers in battle. There is an inherent contradiction here since how can this be both an auto battler but also have you directly controlling the party members and I'm also not sure whether TRPG refers to tactical RPG or tabletop RPG or something completely different so colour me stumped. However, assuming this is direct control, the action sure looks like a beat'em up to me and thus add in material gathering and crafting, introducing RPG elements into the mix and in my opinion looks better in screenshots as compared to this trailer, so check them out for yourself via the link in the description below. Here's an interesting beat'em up title named Pizza Kid which has an interesting art style said to be inspired by 90s anime and graphic novels in which a powerful agriculture company has taken over the world's food supply but their food has side effects, leading to both humans and animals transforming into monsters. Our hero, Kid, is a pizza flipping martial artist who steps forth to protect his city having to take on the mutant creatures as well as the evil leader of the company. The animated cutscenes for this trailer are well done but unnecessary at this stage of development in my opinion since even things like the art style are subject to change but the developers have projected a Q4 2024 release window so we'll probably see it later this year. From the depths of the earth, creatures are climbing out of the catacombs as monstrous as you can imagine. Similar to Spark Hunt covered earlier, Immortal Hunters is a 2.5D side-scrolling brawler but this time has co-op support and adds in RPG elements as well. The developers seem to have thought out the lore for the world created but it's a little bit confusing with regards to phrasing on the Steam store page which may be due to translation but from what I gather, you play as an Immortal Hunter powered by Holy Fire and backed by the church who's able to take on nightmarish creatures that live deep underground in the heart of the planet. However, the church itself is built on the foundation of lies which you will uncover with the game mixing elements from beat'em up, vehicle combat, RPG and choose your own adventure and it's definitely a curiosity. A game with an amazing throwback look is Dancing Divas, one that has an animation style inspired by Pizza Tower and Anton Blast in which four divas from around the world were showcasing their treasure but a robbery has occurred so it is up to them to fight to get it back. It's not that much of a plot which isn't that necessary for this genre, in which the four player characters all play differently and have their own unique movesets and special abilities. 
It does also have 4 player co-op support, and while a little bit provocative in character design, it doesn't stray too far from the light if you know what I mean. The era of remakes and remasters of classic beat-em-ups is upon us, where we're hitting that nostalgia sweet spot for games like Night Slasher's remake, since the original was an arcade title from 1994 and we brought to a new audience. Notably, as compared to other games on this list, it looks more violent, bloody and gory, but the action remains awesome, having an art style that is similar to Streets of Rage 4, which I'm guessing is what they're going after, and also has 4 player co-op support and got on my radar despite me not having any nostalgia for the original. Other than this sick opening to this trailer, I have to admit, I'm not familiar with Toxic Crusaders, which, according to Wikipedia, is an animated cartoon series from the 1990s about a group of misfit superheroes fighting pollution, where personally, I'm more of a Captain Planet guy myself, and while I have no nostalgia for this, the game looks well made and in line with TMNT Shredder's Revenge, which is the bar for pixel art throwback beat-em-ups right now. The characters here look fun with interesting designs and unique movesets, and even has 7 playable characters, and is a direct continuation of the plot of season 1 of the cartoon, since season 2 was never made, so it is great to see the developers go the extra mile with this. Since we last took a look at Underling Uprising, it has refreshed its key art and assets and also has a release window of Q3 2024, so progress definitely has been made and looks pretty good. The characters here were captured and experimented upon, from a girl with a ghost, a cyborg Juchador, a skateboarding chimpanzee and a living booger which can transform into all sorts of things, looking to have a nice variety since all of them are wholly unique. They are seeking vengeance on a mad scientist, having to fight through his minions and bosses before getting to the big bad and is one of the more promising upcoming entries. Another 2D brawler of interest is Detain Too Good For School, one that longtime fans of the channel will be familiar with since it has been showcased quite a number of times, in which you play as a delinquent schoolgirl who has just been released from juvenile detention, now having to find her footing in school and life once again. In addition to the combat which looks good, this has a life sim element where you're free to explore the city and also have to make the choice of either joining the criminal underworld or to become the saviour of the city. There's a larger plot point of wanting to avenge your brother's murder so it is not all happy fun times, with this looking to be released in 2024, so keep an eye out for this. Do excuse the vertical format for Mayhem Brawler 2 Best of Both Worlds since there's no official trailer just yet and I instead got this from the developer's YouTube channel since this is the sequel to a game from 2021 with an improved comic book art style in my opinion. Interestingly, this takes place in two time periods 20 years apart in which you can jump back and forth between the characters and their stories and will have 8 playable characters as well as roguelite and RPG elements. This next title is definitely not in the hence the asterisk, since Tencent owns a majority stake in Play Entertainment and apparently has over a hundred employees now, where they have come a long way since its creation in 2005. People don't seem to know this, so I always highlight the fact, but their games are great, which is why Rot Word is of interest. While not explicitly stated, this might have a roguelite structure, since the developers talk about exploring a maze of forest and vegetation, fighting enemies to get rewards, and bringing the spoils back to camp to fortify it or to craft new weapons and armor. So it might not be for purists, but the action looks awesome and should be releasing in early access this year. 
this long in development title doesn't get talked about much, which I suspect is due to it not having a Steam store page and with the developers being relatively quiet about promoting it, but as far as I know, Nightmare Cops is still in development. This is from a group of developers who made their name on Newgrounds, including Tom Falk, who founded The Behemoth, which of course made Castle Crashers, in which this new game looks fairly similar to the classic but in a different setting, although the signature art style appears to be present and does also have character variety, looking wild and insane and I absolutely cannot wait for this. If you love 2D action platformers, watch this video to discover 40 upcoming games. Oh